for us. Good evening and welcome to my end of the week recap here for SPY and trade plan for this coming week. A lot of big name and big names and earnings coming out. So expect uh, the overall market to make a big move one way or the other. Real quick, these are the executions, the trade areas that I did get into and out of this past week. First of all, my over the weekend hedge here failed. Um, I guess not really failed. It would have protected me on a down move, but uh, was not needed and expired worthless. Over here on uh, Tuesday, tried to pick the bottom here on these 290 calls here at 53. I made a rookie error and put my stop, on, stop loss in immediately as a market order, which took me right back out. So yeah, missed a huge opportunity there on that gap up into Thursday. Um, early in the morning there on Thursday, also took that same 290 call here at 42, scalped out here at 56 right when it tested VWAP. Once that failed, I thought we were going to have a breakdown. We had a nice inverted hammer here, so I took 289 puts at 51. They went and worked in my favor for a little bit on these moves down, but uh, as buyers started to show up on the tape, put in some lower wicks again, just above all my moving averages. Uh, There's no point in me holding that, so got out for a penny gain, minus commissions, small loss on that trade. Ended up starting a swing here in these 26 April 290s at 173 with the intent to go ahead and add lower as we touched the 8 EMA down here. My stop loss was originally around 130. Um, as the next day opened up, I had to adjust that down to 120 to keep it down below the 8 EMA and what I thought would be reasonably outside of the uh, average price movement for a SPY. Um, it was not. They took me out right here at 118. Now, once it came down, broke below the 8 EMA, I had a bottoming trigger that signaled uh, an entry into these 26 April 290 calls again here at 114. And because I'd already been uh, chopped up a couple of times on SPY in the past few days, scalped out some here at 133, and the rest of them stopped me out here at 125, right below VWAP. Um, also got into a small low risk swing trade here, 10 May, 300 calls at 11 cents. I think a lot of the earnings that are coming out are going to prove that the economy is not that bad. Maybe earnings aren't necessarily slowing down as much as the talking heads are saying and uh, everything should be good again or can be considered good again so we'll see what happens with that if that fails it's not a huge position but if it goes up it'll be a very nice little extra payday now as i go to my trade plan for this week i do want to look at getting into the end of the month 290 calls here again for a short little swing for a four or five day hold with the intention to capitalize on a move back up here to around 292. if price action pulls below the adma i have a support entry here at the 21 down below even further, the 282 calls here at the 50 SMA and the 200 SMA. So those are what I'm looking for as far as deep pullbacks. I want to touch on the higher time frame over here, the monthly time frame. Buyers still showing strength, pushing up higher. We're not really at highs anymore, but not too far off it that we can't retake it. I want to touch on the weekly time frame because this is a very important bar to key in on. This is a bar that shows a significant battle. Uh, if this had been a regular week, five trading days, I think the volume would have been elevated. We could really see that there was much more of a, a trading war going on right here. We're coming into the previous highs should be considered an area of supply. Do I think it'll reject from here and come all the way back down? Not too likely. There's too many levels below price action to prevent that, but it is a possibility. Anybody that may be long from down here still is trailing the price up, sees this bar, maybe has a stop below. So uh, a a trigger outside of the lows of last week will probably create at least a moderate drop <clears throat> to the next support, which I would think a retest of this 281 area wouldn't be too far out of the question. Onto the daily time frame. Uh, red hammer candle off of 8 EMA. Most hammer candles I'd really do enjoy to trade and watch because it shows there's still momentum going up. However, with the four red days in a row, um, the location of price in relation to the, uh, the history, I'm a little hesitant to take any heavy longs right now, so I will, st will still continue to uh, trade from the long side, but just cautiously. As I zoom out here again on E-mini futures, start on the monthly time frame again, and let's blow this up. As you can see, buyers are still pushing price higher, um, back at all-time highs, just like the Qs did the other day. I, I expect us to pierce it and uh, just see how far above it it goes. Zooming out here, excuse me, in here to the uh, weekly time frame, I went and tried to find as many of these uh, indecision doji candles that just barely broke above the high of the previous bar somewhere within a prior uh, supply area. So 
this is not a perfect scan. Uh, this was all done just by eyeball. I may have missed some, may have included some that may, someone may not agree with. But I went back all the way here to uh, 2010. I found these 16 instances, three of them actually rejected. Now what I consider a rejection is immediately after the red week in question, uh, we closed lower for three weeks. Only happened three times. Um, eight consolidations, meaning price action may have pierced the low of the red bar, but did not actually close lower and continued higher over the next few weeks. Um, pullback, very similar to that statement uh, in that it may have slightly closed above or breached the low of the prior week only to recover and rally up through that high of that week. So I know that sounds like maybe it's a little too complicated, but uh, the stats don't really lie. Only three of them were actually reversals. Reversals haven't necessarily come off of those candles, although we do have deep pullbacks. You some, see something like this or something like this where it does dip down below it a little bit. So it's just something to keep in mind. Um, now, as I touch on the volume on, on SPY, the volume here is also considered to be elevated, in my opinion, because if there was a full week, we would have had another day of volume, and this would have put in 7.5, maybe 8 million shares, which push it, pushes volume up to about right here. Uh, at the top of these peaks where the last consolidation area took place. So a um, little bit of a battle going on. We'll just have to wait and see what happens going forward. Now onto the daily time frame. We're just outside of the prior consolidation. Uh, it's come down, tested below the ADMA, recovered and pushed up very strongly with a green hammer outside of the ADMA. Now, what I can possibly argue is maybe we're going to be in a range until we have some catalyst that breaks us out of that. Again, earnings season is upon us, and there's a lot of big names reporting this week. As of right now, this is E-mini futures uh, slightly in the after hours, just slightly up higher in relation to Friday, so or Thursday, Thursday excuse me. We'll see what happens there. Um, for now, that's all my trade plan thoughts for the market. Main thing to key in on for me is E-mini futures showing buyers on the day and the month, the weekly showing indecision, so I'm going to have to stay on the bullish side. Now, I do have a plan B for SPY if it does roll over, so we'll see what happens with that on Monday. Have a good evening and good luck.